Kingdom of Cards, we've just released the Bumper Video Game Quiz Book, featuring over 1,000 questions. It features 1,000 questions plus uh, from everything in gaming from 1962 to the present day, and it's available um, from Amazon Worldwide, and the link is in the description below. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Thank you. Bye. So yeah, we just this is the the hallway. This is where the, it sort of starts spilled out from the games room, and we've got a load of um, obviously some key films up here: like the Batman the movie, Nightbreed. I thought that's a Karate Kid, that's Karate Island. And this is where we keep a lot of our um, big box PC and Amiga stuff. We're constantly on the lookout for. I think I need to get an old laptop or something that will run these old games because it's just a nightmare to get them to go. I know you've got GOG.com and stuff, but it's nice to play the older ones. This particular game, Single Swim on the Amiga, has broken two of my Amigas in the past because it just completely chews up the disk drives. So I know never to touch that. I should really just throw the disk. <laughs> never play it ever never again. Never play it. I'll just look at it with hatred in my eyes. Ripper, obviously, with Christopher Walken. There's quite a few key ones here, actually. Blades, um, Blades of Glory, Fields of Glory was one that was um, when he had given us by a concierge with oh, the flat yeah, screen. He just said, I think you were there one day and you had the. Um, Alien 3 joystick. Yeah, I was just chatting to him. Just chatting. He said, I've got a lot of stuff in the attic you can have, and fair play the next day. He brought in, a, it was hundreds of pounds worth of these really, really full on, like, um, strategy games, basically. And um, we had a mouse mat in them, a Fields of Glory mouse mat, which I use, and a printer, loads of stuff, wasn't it? And we had loads of discs with MOD written on them, and uh, it turns out he used to work for the Ministry of Defence, and he said, Yeah, can you throw those discs away from me? Yeah, don't tell them we've got them. Yeah, <laughs> we've still got those. I wasn't going to throw them. Trade secrets, trade secrets. So, yeah, I'm looking Privateer 2 of the Darkening, another game I've never played, but I picked it up for like a quid in the boot sale. And obviously, John Hurt and Tender Loving K, which is essentially a softcore porno with him in a ginger wig by some really bad green screen, which is fine. Lucas House Adventure, I think my brother gave me this. It's lovely, that's the LucasArts as well. The Diplomat Discus comes. That's just really nice. They're basically all the games from. Uh, I think The Dig is on here. What's in here, actually? Yeah, The Dig. I, I really like that game. Dark Forces, probably my favourite Star Wars game. Not that there's many to choose from because I'm not a big fan, but. And obviously Monkey Island. That's absolutely fine. Full Throttle was really good with. Um, Mark Hamill doing one of the voices in that. Mm, uh, okay. I don't like it, I don't oh, we go, it's a simulation game, that's probably why I'm moving on it. Outlaws, which we've also got. Yoda Stories was that one that you remember, wasn't it, on the... Um, I played... <laughs> Death Star again, used to the Richard Gimbal. I played it on the PC, yes. Um, I'm still got it now, I think I've got it on the Game Boy Color. Because well. I remember Yoda Stories and there was Indiana Jones Stories as well. They're, they're basically De kind of the same idea. Desktop Adventures, that's what they were yeah, called. Very similar. So, I've got these... I don't know, you know more about these than me, these um, cool... Um, like yeah, diorama so things. We had these done, oh, we got the Streets Bridge and Monkey Island, and they were by a guy called, well, he owns 8 Bit Boutique. Um, lovely man. Does some really cool artwork. He um, does a lot of bigger things as well. Um, yeah, check him out. Really, really cool. I think there was a, like a sale on, like 40% off, and we just snapped up two as fast as we could. And then down here, then, I'm gonna have to crouch down a little bit, tootie down. I'll move these out of the way because a lot of these are just Gary Daniels fighting for Um Some PC stuff, Gabriel Knight down there, and a load of other like PC, PC stuff, stuff that uh, uh, someone Sims I work with g Sims. gave me a bag full of games um, because because um, he said he took them to CEX and he had about 75 games and they offered him like 85 pence and he had to stand there while they manually scanned everything. So boring, and, like 20p, didn't he? And at the end, the guy said, oh, you know, because I think the guy was embarrassed because he was going to get so little for them. He said, oh, you know, at least you can have a sandwich. And then my friend said, no, I, I couldn't even get a sandwich for 85 pence. So he just said, do you want them? And he gave us a bag full of games, a lot of them, Star Wars games and Star Trek games, I think. Do you want to grab the Dr. Richard Gimble for a bit while you um, go through some of these? Oh, I would like to say, Brutal Sports Football, or Brutal Football is a game I spent a lot of time with when I was a kid. It's amazing, and Simon the Sorcerer is another absolute classic for me from my childhood. I've got a feeling we've got two or three copies on the too, somehow. Yes, yeah, we may have sold one now, but I think we did have quite a couple. <laughs> we've got them sold somewhere else as well, haven't we? Hunter, the precursor to Grand Theft Auto. What a game, what a game.
So this is the first thing you see when you come in, really, is... Um, oh, the, these board games are really cool. Okay, they're awesome, aren't they? I, pe I got the Street Fighter 2 one from America. I think that's the most I've spent on a board game is £50. I, I felt like it was worth £50. It's a cool collector's thing, but it's not a good game, is it? No, I, w I wouldn't part with it, but it's not a very good game, now. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of these games. What would you say were the best out of these? We've done a few of videos. Zaxxon was good. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, oh, Pac-Man actually as well. Even though it was quite finicky, I did enjoy Pac-Man. Yeah. The fact you have to go along as well and gobble up the... Um, Obviously he requested it. The white balls. I didn't see that. Is that Barbie on the top? Yeah, that's my Barbie. <laughs> of course. Yeah, Turbo I loved as well because it was just uh, quite cool. They're all just really fun games and then the, M the MB ones are just quite awesome to have, I think. That kind of... The, um, the video game range, arcade, well, based on arcade games, aren't they? Uh, apologies as well if this is slightly shaky because I bought Faye what we call the Dr. Richard Gimbal for Christmas <laughs> and we're just getting used to it. But, um, so, so <clears throat> the handhelds are very much your scene. Yeah, and this is one more in this section. So we've got very dusty game gear. We do dust sometimes, but Obviously today, <laughs> it has slipped <laughs> faster. Well, uh, I think this one was from. Uh, didn't your friend Chris give this one to me? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't work, but because they all often had problems. Oh, the they? capacitors always burn out. Yeah. But it's still really lovely and still like mm. it switches. It can switch, it switches on, doesn't it? But it never quite loads the game properly. It sort of flickers, if I remember. Um, this is my favourite game gear. Say. It's a limited okay. edition one, isn't it? Yeah, I'll show you now because it comes up looking at it. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at it, it's just the beauty. So we have that, and it's got its original case as well. I think that was an eBay find, and I think I actually bought about 15 games that went with it. Just have a little look at the games here. Well, the TV too, now, mm -hmm. obviously. Move these out of the way. Are they Atari games over there? Oh no, they're just weird. Yeah, they're all, these are all um, the game we've got get unboxed. Oh, we've got a game few Game games. Oh, look, oh, the perfect one. Straight away. Terminator. Please. So look at some titles. We've got Woody Pop. Ominous. <laughs> dun dun. Olympic Gold. Oh yeah. Got Those tend to be really system. good as well, didn't they? The Olympic games. That's that. your one, oh. I think. I won't go through all these, but... Hollywood. I don't think I've played that one. This one I love. Winter Game and Winter Olympics. Yeah, we've got the Mega Drive. Mega Drive, yeah. Global Guardians. I love turning them around because I don't know what I'm going to get. <laughs> we've got some of the original. Oh, pieces. so they're all Game Gear Home Alone. You yeah, they're all. Well, there's so many Game Gear games. Um, this one is brand new, pristine for no reason. Not worth anything. Yeah, why would you open that? That was like a quid in Manchester Play Expo. Like a sealed game gear game for a quid. I know it's poker face Paul's gin. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we've got? Echo the Dolphin, another classic. Castle of Illusion. Obviously the guitar tuner pack. I lost this. Um, guitar tuner, calm down. Sorry, TV tuner pack. <laughs> <laughs> I lost this behind one of the shelves when we first moved into the games room. and. Um, Moved into the games room. We well, basically did move into the games room. <laughs> yeah. And I fell right behind, so only recently I've been able to get a year later because we've um, I moved some shelves around the other day. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Can you not film my double trim, please? <laughs> Down there. Um, obviously, classic micro machines. Two, Two as well. Yeah. Some awesome titles. The only problem there. with playing games like micro machines on the game gear is it's obviously just single player. So, bit of a shame. Yeah, this is phase um, one of many uh, Game Boy sections in the flat, really. Yeah. It's, it, I just try and find a way to showcase them as well, because especially these, I've seen various ways that people have put Yeah, their, just the piles of... Yeah, I saw, I saw one guy on Instagram, <clears throat> he puts his in an actual folder. I think it's like a coin folder or something. That could be really nice, actually. I think that would be nice, because you can... Would you be able to do that with the Game Gear games as well? Probably, yeah, because it, it's not that too much We could have a look at the video, really, just get a nice point full down. That's so. my sister's original Game Boy. How can you tell them apart? Because one of them had a, it's got like a, a scratch, and I think this one's glued, being re-glued, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Original Game Boy that she That's pretty cool. gifted to me. They're pretty robust things, aren't they? They don't... 
This is the one your brother gave me, actually. That's cool. Though. Purple, oh purple yeah. and brown, the only colours you need. Or that could be my one. I don't know, they look the same. <laughs> because I've got, still got my original one as well. It's over there somewhere. Yeah. So, what, down on the next shelf then, we've got, this is the NES section. We've got quite a few, because we don't, neither, neither of us are particularly nostalgic for the NES, but we do, if we see something for a good deal or we're intrigued by it, I think the game we played the most on the Nintendo was probably Excite Bike, because we used to set high scores before we went to work, didn't we, in the uh, morning? So that was a fun yeah. few weeks of just every morning doing that and then setting up like the high score. Oh yeah, that was really cool. And the NES cleaning kit, obviously. <laughs> I think it's missing a couple of bits on it. <laughs> and I'd like to think we could clean all the NES games with this, but sadly we have not done that yet, have we? <laughs> Like oh, awesome Billionaire game. Banshee, yeah, I need to get a, I got sent that to review, and I'm sure it, it sounds like a cool party game, but um, our NES is PAL, and that's an NTSC copy, so I need to um, need to sort that out to, that to review fun. it. So one of the ones are in there, let me zoom in, have a goosey. Goal, obviously, Gauntlet. Wrath of the Black Manta, the Manta, that game is hard. Kabuki uh, Quantum Fighters is good, isn't it? Oh. And another one is um, Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. Oh. So that was really cool to have. Oh, Kabuki Magical. Quantum Fighters just on the top right there if you want to play that. I'm just there, the white, white box on the top. There. To the right. Oh. Okay. Cool. There we go. That's probably one of my favourite games. It's really music. cool cover art as well, isn't it? It's really full on. In fact, that featured in one of our quizzes a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Like the game where you hit people with your hair. It's got amazing music as well. Okay. Yeah, there's so many cool titles on there. Yeah, but yeah, we haven't well. got too many. It's a bit dark in there. I know. But we've got Donkey Kong. That's another game we played a lot of. Tecmo World Wrestling. Table Racing, DuckTales, Rad Racer. A lot of cool ones. Double Dragon 2 there. And then this is this is phase bread and butter really all of the um, handheld stuff. <laughs> Two Dreamcast VMUs just casually popping in the but corner. You never know when you may need them. Yeah, and there's um, oh there's a DS keyboard from Spain that my mother brought us back, which is cool. But you've got a lot of uh, DS games and 3DS games. I zoomed in. Oh. Yeah, this is um, this is phase domain really all the handheld stuff, and then it's i can't really go much down any further but there we've got um all the super nintendo and n64 games and so we're not particularly they're cool but we tend to we're not collectors of those no. so we don't pick up you know all the boxed with manuals we just like grab them if they're a cool deal a lot of these um you'll see a few of them scattered around the that by the way looks like dennis waterman and <laughs> what i find about this is i love how they've covered up the very thing that is so bad that they've covered up what's actually being advertised on the TV. But yeah, it's still made to look really exciting, isn't it? Um, but a lot of these, the Ingersoll screenplay and the Binaton, there was, um, it, it must be about eight or nine years ago, and I remember that guy said on like um, the free ads that he would swap a, oh, the Sega Saturn. a Sega Saturn with one pad and one game for all of his, because his grandfather passed away, all of, of these just boxed consoles he'd found in the shed. And I said, oh, that's fine. So I gave him like a Virtual Fighter 2, one pad, and sat me at the time. And we had about 12 of those. He just and he thought they were yeah. completely worthless, and I said, "Oh no, that'd be really cool to have them to save them from a skip." So, yeah, we had those back, and um, it's just brilliant, isn't it, to have even? It's just really, it's just a nice piece of history to have. I mean, I'd never have heard of these things, but it just tickles me. This grandfather just had about twelve of them in a shared box. He'd obviously like treasured them. You'd have to keep them. Yeah, we must have about fifteen to twenty of those, wouldn't we? Some jokes, what thousand like I just love seeing the different images of families. Family's family. A drawing yeah. of the family in that case. This looks a bit like Princess Leia. This, um, the supervision up there that you picked up in... Um, in Paris, in actually. And um, on Boulevard Voltaire. Mm, push the glasses up the nose. <laughs> um, but sadly, it does not work. That's the problem with buying electronics, isn't it? You just think, can you put batteries in so I can see this working? But there's a language barrier as well. I don't think I even complained. I just, I mean, it's still good to have. It came with quite a few games, but sadly, I can't. Same with a couple of things we had in Expos. Um, handheld wise don't work and everything. Yeah. I, we've learned our lesson. And they've kind of assured us they'd work. <clears> but but when you're paying 20, 30, 40 quid for something, you can't really. Um, yeah. Or don't forget to use the trigger, kind of steadies it and what you're zooming in. 
Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of your Wonder Swan as well, the Wonder Swan colour, which you also picked up, I think, in Paris. Yes, Maxi Games, maybe? The fact you can actually remember the store. Maxi Games isn't there anymore. Yeah, that was a good few, it was like about four years ago when we went to uh, um, for the first second, time. yeah. Oh no, second time, you're alright. That's my original game con. <laughs> the original Tiger, best. nice little tiger touchscreen handle. I thought it was fantastic. The fact it was touchscreen as well. And you could actually go online, but I've never been online yet. Oh, and now I'm wrecking the place. Um, yeah, and then down we've got the Atari games. Again, when we, I really like, I like having these games. I love the titles of them, especially games like Schussel de Polizistenschreck and Eddie Langfinger de Museum Stieb. They were from that awesome little re that retro spiel in... Um, in Cologne. Yeah. In Cologne. We bought quite a few from there, didn't we? And he told us that this um, Schussel de Polizistenschreck translates to an old man frightens off a policeman, which is fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so we've got quite a few going back as well. But if you need us to um, do an actual video on like a certain section, we could do a section by section, could be quite nice. Yeah, I might look for that, it's fine. Um, obviously we've got a sealed copy, again for no reason, of Dark Chambers. Yeah, it just seems a shame to... It's been sealed for so many years. Yeah, again, from an expo for like three quid and you're like... What does that look like on the back? How are they selling this for three pounds? Oh, actually, it looks quite involved. They're quite nice graphics for the Atari 2600. They are actually, aren't they? Yeah. Pop that open now. Master the Subterranean Kingdom. Mm. I'm not sure what this game's about. Um, never going to play Golf, it. I think. Oh, right, okay. Got some Elvira sweets with my brother from when he went to Hollywood. Because I love Elvira. It's and then the, the rest of the Game Boy stuff. Yes, yeah, so there's not enough Game Boy stuff, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Game Boy camera, obviously, to go with the Game Boy printer, which we need to play more of. <laughs> play more of? I've always wanted yeah. to play with so some of scroll seats. down. Awesome little Mario Luigi Kitty of my mum. And a Game Boy Color box. Which it was just the box, but um, I had that with my sister. She found it at the attic. Um, and that Mario stand, I remember you buying that. And you were back and forth so much with the guy. It was like that, £8, wasn't it, in the next ball, I think. I think it was like 25 And then every time we walked past the store, it went down to like 15 then 12 and then it yeah. was, and then he took 8 And that, that is really, it is a really cool holder for it. But again, this is all very much your uh, domain, all the handheld stuff. Oh no, oh, this was a gift off for the um, Nintendo store. Oh, Rupert, you know, isn't it? My friend Rupert, who does the state of plays, where um, it was one the Nintendo store. You know, they were doing that thing, you had to cash in your coins or something? Yes. And, and I managed to get a few things. I had quite a few coins online, but I contacted them and they said you can't use them anymore. And you could have had that. Was it Ball, Ball and ball and Juggler oh, handheld they were giving yes. away? Yes. Yeah. The Nintendo Game & Watch, wasn't it? Ball. Speaking of game watches, the majority of them are in um, the cabinet in the living room, which we'll do a video on another day. But I actually picked up this from eBay, and I think it was it was about twelve pound. Comes with the original polystyrene, which I thought was really cool, and obviously the game <laughs> bonus. <laughs> the most important part. But they didn't mention that it came with a box. Now I'm not too think like I'd have to have the box or anything, but the fact it came it, with a box was such a nice mention, surprise. Yeah, yeah was really it was cool. lovely that was. Obviously it's a bit of a gouge out of there. It's a specific but, um, gouge. Yeah, love that. Oh yeah, and, and this is, um, we do have entire days of playing games on the Commodore. We've got some Atari stuff, um, Commodore, Spectrum, Amstrad, and a few other random ones. But mainly this is Commodore, Spectrum, and Amstrad. I guess just because they were the biggest ones in Britain. And they're easier to find and uh, yeah this goes back like four or five deep so there's, oh, there's hundreds here it's classics on there isn't it <sighs> i remember i just love the artwork but you pull out any of these and there'll be some fun british bubbly artwork on the front there you go always it's good so artwork good. always good artwork picked up um quite a lot of these ones from expos as well didn't we the ones that came with the magazine there was a charity one day one day and they were doing them 20p and all the money for charity so we just went bonkers because i thought well we're giving a charity and getting games yeah so that was perfect. it's still a lovely guy who ran the store um as well wasn't it don't don't swing by too fast for you because obviously you don't want to you don't want to pass well from gladiators yeah he's hot isn't he he is hot he's sweating in fact i know <laughs> <laughs> obviously there's one called arnie and Looks a bit like him. Not sure if they got the um... base on that. Him, surely. Tusker was a game. That game there. I remember really loving that as a kid. Um, the music and I found it really weirdly um, ambient. Nope. Oh, right. Really cool. Ooh, really cool. It looks ominous well. yeah, on the yeah, cover, yeah. doesn't it? 
it was like a size scroll thing but really cool you could spend a day just looking at the covers yeah well i have <laughs> yeah um, werewolves of london yeah two copies of that look did that, i need one <laughs> that was the first time that i realized how much i love werewolves i just used to look at the screen and wait for him to turn into a werewolf i don't even know what you're supposed to do in it where is it where's action biker i can see it action biker Action I see Count Duckler, that's an important one for me. It's a diff difficult one. And Paper Stunt Boy. Car Racer. Oh god, that's not going to run very well. And Pub Trivia, it's such a fun one to play, isn't it? Pub Trivia, yeah, that's a genuinely cool game. Again, really cool bubbly British graphics. And um, Fruit Machine? And yeah, your Fruit Machine tr uh, games that you've got. Well, there's, there's Trivial Fruit there. And Super Fruit, you put them all together. Oh god. Where was... Um, Clumsy Colin, oh, uh, sorry, Action Biker, and oh my god, here we go, the best, this is what I wanted to show. When people talk about the best games on the Commodore 64, this is the precursor to survival horror as far as I'm concerned. What a game. Gunfighter. Absolute classic. Should we move down one? Yeah. So these are, like, I think these are a lot of Amiga ones in smaller, um, smaller boxes. Dungeon Quest, which is very meta, and then it gets a little bit messy over there, but you can still see. Team 17 Arcade Pool, um, which is a game I spent a lot of time on as a kid because I love the physics to that game. And if you, I don't know if you can know at the very bottom here, this is one of a few things that um, I was uh, was on Facebook and someone tagged me in a post years ago and said, oh, this guy's just throwing some stuff into a skip. And it was this, and it was genuinely full. I think you might have to, they're not going to fall out too much. But this, this is what was in there at the time. We haven't. We kind of kept the games in there because, but loads of just like Spectrum games, and um, just so cool. He he was throwing them away. He just he put a post on Facebook and said, "Oh, you know, ashamed to throw my memories away, but there's no room anymore." And that, and if you want to pat up to the, in fact, you said shame throwing them out. Yeah, like, ask somewhere. Um, uh, this Mega Drive Two up here. Ooh. Sorry. The Doctor Richard is playing up. That Mega Drive Two, which was like complete, like with with two pads and everything. And this Spectrum Plus action pack over there. That one you can just see poking up there. Those three things he was just binning. Oh, and that as and well. And that as well. I don't just know where that, that. Come, just <laughs> it. Um, up my sleeve. But, um, Again, original poly... It excites me the when it's got the original in, But yeah, so like that, the box of Spectrum games. A, a Mega Drive 2 that was effectively sealed and that Spectrum box. And when I said, oh, do you mind if I come around and pick them up? He said, yeah, if you want. And when I was taking them off him, I was obviously beaming. And he wouldn't take any money. He just, he was frowning at me like, why do you want this crap? Yeah. Of course you want it. Of course we want it. I'm not stupid. And you were asking me, and I thought, yes, tell them quick. Yes, tell them we'll have them. So. I don't know if you can see up there, but those characteristic. Oh, the joysticks, joysticks. by Cheetahs. I love these. Bart Simpson, got Alien, hidden behind Sonic there, and Batman, obviously. Oh, the talk boy. You flashed the talk boy in there, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a Christmas present on my parents this year, the Space Turbo. Oh, it's my, it's my birthday thing. Birthday, birthday, was it? Yeah. Oh, the Interactor. We've done a video on that. <sighs> on the backpack. That if, was... <sighs> if you think the PSVR is a pain to set up, whew, the Interactor. So heavy as well, isn't it? So loud. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to watch that video back. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while to do. Obviously, at the top, but all the pretty handhelds I bought you and encouraged you to have, wasn't it? All the golf ones. <laughs> yeah, you started picking up those little handouts, and some of them are really good, actually. So the problem is sometimes when you've got like five frames of animation and it's a timed game to swim a golf club, yeah. it ruins it. But there are some really cool ones there. So hidden behind the Nintendo, like I know. Looks so Forced messy in, in this corner. That's the thing, doesn't it? Look, see how messy our corner is. It's but the horrible. thing is, you can get to it, you can get to all of it, it's fine, isn't it? We know where stuff is, that's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, just don't like the fact the shelves overlap. Yeah. But you've got to make the most of the space, haven't you? And if you want to take one, just take out a few, push them down, boom, you got it. Yeah, and you just got to get rid of your window like we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely block up the window. <laughs> but yeah, this is, so we've got a lot of um, Wii U and Wii stuff at the top there. I do like these consoles because they, they tend to have a lot of mini party games, which we specifically enjoy. So can, yeah, see if I can... Uh, Oh, that's, this is where it all falls apart, isn't it? The sneaky peek behind there. Again, we can do another video, can't we, on different sections. Another day. So yeah, they've got the GameCube. I'm, the I'm, Game Boy is more important than me. I'm rediscovering the GameCube at the moment, because I'm having, um, before the lockdown, I was having my brother around every few weeks, and we were just going through different systems, the sort of local games, 
local co-op, and we had some really, really good times on the GameCube. I haven't played that Pokemon one yet. No, well, my brother gave us a load, and we haven't had time to sort of we got sidetracked with other things. But, uh, there's some really tasty games on the GameCube, and it's so smooth as well. Like Simpsons Hit and Run was like a complete dream on the GameCube. That's a good girl. Ace Golf, obviously. Oh, <gasps> WireWay! Oh, How yes. can we forget about WireWay? That's one of my favourite games on there, I think. Look at that SSX3 binding. Eternal Darkness again, a gift of my brother blessing. Disney's Hide and Sneak. That's one I haven't played yet, actually. It read it from Kex, wasn't it? Um, I think we had a phase of, of the GameCube and cables gone missing or power adapters breaking, so we had a picked up, kept picking up games, but then... Yeah, so it's embarrassingly, a couple of, only literally a few, isn't it? They? They've slipped into our collection when we've kind of forgotten about. It's just future gold down the line. So yeah, the, um, the same with Master System, there's a, quite a few down there. I'm just going to pan into my favourite game. <sighs> Oh. Wolf Child. <laughs> Silent it. game. Some really cool ones on the Master System, isn't it? Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy is the game I really, really did love on the Master System. And Smurfs. You didn't, didn't you ever play that? Uh, no, I bought that for you, but I never... Not growing up, did you play it? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. I remember the Smurfs cartoon, but I don't remember much else. Oh, I used to play it. Was it into Master Mega Blast? The frame rate on that as it issues on the Master System. Um. We've got quite a nice Sega Saturn collection actually as well, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, and that was, I bought this off um, King Monkey. Yeah, Thank cheers for King that. Thank you King Monkey for that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really nice games in the Saturn, some cool demo demo discs. My brother obviously got us um, Shining Force 3 there, which is a key, key game. But uh, I think it's called Valora Valley Golf. It's a really cool golf game where you basically play in hell. And that, that's quite cool. <laughs> of course. Die Hard Arcade's amazing. <gasps> Athlete Kings is definitely Athlete amazing. Athlete Kings is genuinely oh. one of the best games on, the, on that my, system. One of my favourites, that. That along, and along with Pandemonium. Yes, you do love Pandemonium. And there's... Uh, what was Exhumed. Oh, Virtual Fighter 2, which is one of my favourite fighters. And you're really really good at it, so... Yeah, I'm good at all games. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Virtual Cop. We did have a CRT TV that packed up, bless bless it, so we have to buy a new one soon. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> a very tiny Dreamcast collector, actually. Yeah. But we've got Super Runabout, which is the only game anyone needs on the Dreamcast. What an amazing game. Shout out to the Surf Coasters. Oh yeah, down there there's about a hundred. Um, NTSC PAL Japanese Mega Drive games that we haven't yeah. got in boxes. It'd be nice to upgrade them as well, wouldn't it? And just oh, yeah. put them in boxes and stuff. And this is like the piece de resistance, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is, is the, the... the kind of the only one we really genuinely collect for the Mega Drive. A lot of gold. It'd be nice to have a full set as well, wouldn't it? That's the only one I'm bothered about, um, is having a full set. It would be really nice, but. When I could go through these individually, we spent so much time. You got Adam's Family, which is one of your favourites. Altered Beast Classic. Classic, Aladdin, amazing. Another World, a game from my childhood. But Quite the Games is really good as well. Really, really good. That's one we picked up from Paris, wasn't it, again? Yeah. I think everyone we pick up is one well, yeah, from Paris. <laughs> that was That's really expensive. And over there, it was like a really weirdly low price. I yeah, it was like 15 quid or something, wasn't it? And Alicia Dragoon is a game I play a lot. It's, it, you know, you have those sort of games you when you play the Mega Drive, you think, well, I'll play Alicia Dragoon, I'll play Guy Now. There's certain games you just want to check Yeah, on. and they're the first ones you go to, aren't they? Yeah, Biohazard Battle is another one. The evil Back to the Future game. <laughs> you love it. Captain America and the Avengers. I think I play that every single time my brother comes down. Dick Tracy is another one. Oh, Devilish is an amazing game if no one's played the it. Pinball, it's like a two pinball, yeah, a two-player breakout game. That's right. Break Dragon's out. Fury is another classic. Yes. Columns again. We've on oh, Chakan the Forever Man. Really cool atmospheric game. Very tough. Mm -hmm. Fantastic Dizzy. And it is music. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, the music in that game is really, really cool. Grand Slam Tennis, my favourite tennis game. Green Dog Beach Surfer Dude, floaty jumps. Usually Grand Slam Tennis I find difficult, and normally I'm quite good at the tennis games. I was so. going to mention that we were watching um, Games You Loved Chris on a live stream yesterday, he was talking about bomb games, and there's a Domark one on the Amstrad, I remember, where you're setting off uh, bombs, or diffusing bombs in mines, but I really like this game. Really, really like James Bond Duel. And it's Timothy Dalton. Hashtag the best Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Timothy. So yeah, that's a really good game. We got that from a shop in Kyra for Takazoku. Six quid. Yeah, before um, it became Super Tomato, wasn't it? Yeah, old school. Let's just get down here. <gasps> Haunting Star and Poltergeist, another fun one, isn't it? That is do a remake. Hyperdunk, which John Linneman from um, 
Digital Foundry was talking about earlier on, and General Chaos, which is a game you can finish in 20 minutes, but it's 20 minutes of golden fun. And then uh, down the bottom there, Mutant League of Hockey, which we picked up for like five quid. It was literally it was, five quid. I was pounds, shaking as I paid for that. I couldn't believe that they'd. It was from like a, a retro store, wasn't it? Yeah, um, which was in Newport, was sadly gone now. He was a cool guy, he fixed our cocktail table as well. What's on the bottom there? Mortal Kombat. Look at you, Landstalker. Tucked away there, Lakers versus Celtics, the PAL version. Oh, so that's our piece to resist. Yeah, just tucked in there as well, good. Um, Kid Chameleon as well, which is another great game. But it, it, it poof, And Mercs, which I just wish was two player. Yeah, so what have we got here? Pat Mania, which is awesome. I've put all the PJ Golf games together. Second and third are really, really good, but after that they get a bit. In iffy when they go into 3D. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> Yeah, hmm. I could never get a good with uh... There you got the Road Rash 2. Rolling Thunder 2, classic. Oh, the uh, this is an awesome game, isn't it? Road Rash 2. I gotta say, I was a big fan of Road Rash 2, thinking it was the best in the series for a very long time, like, was it 25 years? But recently I've realised that, music aside, because Rob Hubbard didn't do the music in the third one, the gameplay and the, and the courses and the feel is better. And the third one? Yeah, are better rather, but it, I'm rediscovering that now. I played it with my brother again, one of our co-op nights, and I realised no, actually, I've come, I dismissed this out of hand for some reason. But the music isn't as good, like really isn't as good. But um, but aside from that, it's a, it's a pretty much an improvement in every department. So I'm enjoying playing that. We've got got, got our passwords written down, obviously. I'll get them back in. <laughs> I'll help. Splatterhouse Two. I love the music in this game as well. It's quite frantic at the beginning, isn't it? And. Really cool, but quite weirdly difficult as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those games that's short, but um, how many dies that? Oh, good. Strider. Oh, side pocket. Oh, we that's a quite nice side one. Side pocket it? for like three quid up in up in Leeds, um, and what a game! The physics in that are bonkers, but it's so, the music is amazing as well. I think. I can't remember the name of the, it was a female Japanese composer who did the music for it and it's a it really, really cool like sort of bar and lounge music. And this is something that Rupert pointed out as well. On the cover there you've got like three different art styles. You've got like a realistic oh, looking yeah. woman, a cartoon like guy ogling her, and then like a kind of James Cagney character. It's really odd. It's not consistent then, is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a, a saucy version of that called Pocket Gal Deluxe as well. <laughs> Oh, there's some of these awesome ones here, look, Shining Force, Shining Force 2, Sunset Riders, when I pick that up. So, second Samurai, we um... Yeah, well, we bought that again from an expo, didn't we? We, um, we uh, from... Retro, Retro Hunter. Hunter. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. Story of Thor, but the batteries failed, I need a new copy of that for anyone selling it, because um, I can't save my game, so there's no point playing it, basically. Get out of my way. Well, we've got the Shadow Dancer. Um, Shadow Smiths, I did like that game as well. I prefer the Master System version. But, yeah. Prefer the Master System version? Yeah. Next to that as well is Stargate, which isn't a particularly good game, but it's got really, really satisfying gunplay in it, like the machine guns, uh, and you play Kit Russell, which is fine. Spiru as well, oh, picked that up. Yes, I'm embarrassed. It's because they've got a strip of shops yeah. on Boulevard Voltaire. What do they expect us to do? Oh, my favourite section, like the streets of age, there they are. <laughs> Second one, obviously the best one. Terminator as well, a really, really fun game. Talmud's Adventure, which is faded. Oh. That's what made us take it out of the window in the old flat, because we, we were on the fourth floor in the old flat, the sun was always beaming in. Yeah, it's faded the some side. of the sat, um, there's no coming away from that though, was there? We didn't have any storage and it was a tiny, tiny yeah, open plan straight. living room and stuff. We didn't have any space. We're out of space now, actually. And the last little bit there, Universal Soldier, good. Strike Games, Worms, X-Men, and Xenon 2, which, while not a perfect conversion, is definitely better than the Mass System one. And then down the bottom then, you've got a load of um, our sort of Genesis games. And there's a, I don't know if you can see it there, you can. Invasion is a game that we picked up from the first expo we ever went to, and there was, um, it was like a high score tournament on that. Oh, that was really cool, wasn't it? I was so determined as well to win it. You were the one who was like, right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And we felt like we had to buy the game anyway. Yeah, because he said that it was, um, got a little stuff in there as well. Oh, psychotic softy. 
But the guy said he developed it as a way to show his kids 70 of 100 how to sort of program games. So he was such a nice guy. We just had a nice chat with him for half an hour. And then yeah, I'm just going to need blocks too. So, yeah, and then down the bottom, Outrun 2019, some cool games. But um, as you can see, the red the red faded in the old flat. Yeah, and some of them were, one of the, a couple of them were new. Um... Dash and Desperados, cool game. And then a few. Oh, how did that get there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the one that was brand new and it was bright red. And look at it, it's just sad. And just slightly I faded. I just wish you could go back in time and not be so naughty. Do you want to spend two hours talking about SeaWorld Space Intruder Fay? Yeah, well, I haven't opened them. <laughs> I think from 2005. Yeah, 2005. That's oh, a good how guess. did I know? <laughs> that, was a, that was a good guess. <laughs> I think I just know, I know my handhelds. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, I got given this as a gift. But uh, it's obviously something to do with SeaWorld, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the thing is that like, you don't, do you need to open it and play if it's sealed? Well, no, mm. and I mean, it's not going to be much. Uh, we don't tend I'm to sure keep many amazing. games. I think we've got Sega Bass Fishing sealed, but look yeah. at that. And the other things we keep that I've kept sealed um, are the Grandstand watches. Little Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Mickey. We opened this one. It's just because you have to open that, don't you, and play it. Yeah, the Tiger ones do need to be played. And the Tiger games, despite what anyone says, are awesome. <laughs> Aren't they? Yeah. Just playing through them, they're amazing. I think when you when people tend to pick them up from what you said, they pick them up and play them and think, oh, that's crap. But then if you actually look, look at the instruction manuals and have a context of what's happening and follow the instructions, they are much more playable than people give them credit for. Yeah, I think, I think you it's need... an easy thing to dismiss, isn't it? Yeah, I think you need to read the instructions though, because when I've been yeah. playing through, like literally playing through them. Like, On the yeah, you just yeah, I think a few I've videos. only played through three of them completely all the way through now. I think Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. I started with the Disney. Um, I could play through Altered Beast. That could be a video one day. Nice. Well, it begins with A. Keeping the alphabetized. Uh... Yes. Yes. So if I move this um, best-selling book out the way, yeah, then that's for the. <laughs> Um, you say that I don't, um, I'm more about the handhelds, but this is your personal handheld collection, isn't it? The it PSP? Yeah, the PSP. I kind of got into the PSP at the perfect time because there's a few scattered on the top down here as well, but um, the, that goes back two rows. But of course, when like the PS3 and when the PS4 was coming out and stuff, and then the PS Vita, I kind of got into it then, so this price has just dropped, so I picked up a little Crisis Core, one of my brother's favourite games with his, one of his favourite endings. Gangs of London, surprisingly good. Hot yeah. Pixel is a mini game thing, another mini game collection, which is really, really good fun and cheap if you find it. It's just like one player mini games. So why haven't you got many of the movies on there? Uh, because um, it's just <laughs> it's just like a dead kind of medium, really. Phase just paying money for nothing. I can watch on Netflix. I think I actually picked up this one in my Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Right oh, it's up showing you. That's the problem with those games. When the controls get a bit twin sticky and problematic, you're best off sticking to like. Um, something that can be controlled oh, flat out head-on good puzzle chronicles is weirdly good as well actually but a lot of these games are just good it's just pretty good and this is my personal favorite on it i think that's an absolutely fantastic game that i'm playing through for the second time now um i want a couple of xbox games up there call again a couple of these off my brother um call of cthulhu he gave which is that is a terrifying game really terrifying links 2004 for the golfers out there one of my favorite arcade golf games that is fast 60 fps Dino Crisis 3 off Casey as well. Oh, I'm going to these up here while we're talking about the Xbox. Prior, which I've never played. Important, Shamiri 2. Yeah, which is cool to have, but those games, there's only yeah. so long you can move boxes in a warehouse before you get bored. Yeah, but still, it's classic. What's this? There's a game they called Jaeger on the sequel, Meister. Spanish Tomb Raider book, obviously. That was really cool to get a first. That was from uh, my brother and his girlfriend. Well, um, I don't know if it was belonged to her or... It must have been. Um, I think she went home, went up her attic, and she yeah. had this Spanish Tomb Raider thing, uh, graphic novel, which That's was cool. That's awesome. Don't gloss over what was there then, that green thing. Come on. We've tucked the way up there out of the way. I was going to be to do it in another video. Konami Contra, obviously. Look. Those are cool. Really, they are, the Turtles... Is it Turtles 1 or 2? You'll know this. When you have to go through that kind of wheel and get a key to rescue April O'Neil from a cage, it's either Turtles 1 or 2. I the, uh, that's one of my favourite handheld Wasn't games. We have to play through that. Oh, and the, the Vita games up there as well. Don't miss out uh, Top Gun golf. as well. Oh, Top Gun. I'll be alright. See, there are a couple of handhelds dotted around, I think. <laughs> Hidden. <laughs> Everybody's Golf. 
I must have played that game for about 80 hours. It is a good game though. And then this is, I was, oh, there's Animal Crossing. Oh, My Easter present, you just, just tucked away. And obviously a Count Duckler curtain clip on. I don't know what we got that from. Attack is so cool. When straight was, away, straight away. Again, it was like two ninety nine or something like that. It was quite cheap when I bought it. Um, I'll scan over this section a little bit. I mean, if there are ma any massive PS2 fans out there, let us know. I have to admit, and I'll pan out for this, like when you look at all of these um, PS2 games we've got, I have to make, I always feel like I want to make a point that I feel like we don't actually collect for the PS2. We just kind of pick them up because they're always yeah. cheap. I think we kind of stumbled um, across them as well, didn't we? We didn't um, purposely set out to buy them, but when you get when you get them dirt cheap as well. Yeah, and I'm always intrigued. Like when I see a, when I see a game, I don't know. I'll just point a random one like Beat Down Fists of Vengeance. That sounds cool. Is it quid? Yeah, I'm buying it. it. And it's the same for a lot of these. Rumble Racing, of course, is is very important. And Run About Three New Age is the. Well, hopefully, I can see it here. Run about through New Age, usually it just flies into my arms. But that's one of the best games on the system as far as I'm concerned. Surf coasters again. And then down here then, again a bit more modern now with the um, uh, Xbox 360 games. And my brother very kindly gave us the Alan Wake. Right, I don't know if you can see how thick that is, that box set for Alan Wake. There's so much gold in there. And we've got quite a few um, of the... We've got quite a few of the non-Disney titles, haven't we? The one, like, um... Oh, the ones that are rip out, like, not, yeah. what are they called? I'm trying to think of the name. Ah, uh, you'll find it, it's like Snow Princess but instead I can't of Snow find, White. I think I was quite rare, rare the Snow White and Seven Dwarfs one, isn't it? I, I know, like, is I'm it, it Hercules, it begins with a P. Not the K. Hercules, Phoenix. Not Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix Software, they just do all the, um, ropey. We should keep all together, shouldn't we, but I can't... For all the Xbox 360 fans, there's a collection of games. So, let's have an example of this somewhere. No, I can't find any one. Here goes with a hit, um, K is this, we've got... Terra in alphabetical order, so there should be a H. Oh, it's going to be behind these, I think. Ah, we've got Legend of Hercules. Oh, Legend of Hercules. Make sure I'm getting this in shot. Look at that. It screams quality. And there's that, if you ever see that badge, don't buy it because it's usually just a load of like really bad cartoons and simple jigsaw puzzles. Yeah, all they are jigsaw puzzles. So bad. Disappointed. And for this room anyway, because obviously we've got stuff in the living room, moves on to the final section um, of PS1 games and sort of PS3 and PS3. It's basically the PlayStation section, isn't it? Yeah. So it's um, so the thing with the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2, um, <sighs> the spines aren't really anything to look at, do they? So they just... Again. Surf Coaster soundtrack, one of the best games on the system as far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't say it's the best on the system. Mm. It's a good game. There's a lot of, again, if people want to look at things in, in real depth, we'll happily yeah, we'll have to... go through certain ones. Because we're not really talking about ones that are given stories and stuff, we're just a, just a little a goosey so you can sort of see PS3 earpiece I've never used because I never game online. I never used to anyway. And these are ones that turn with the discs missing, they're basically spare cases that Faze put a Obviously, she bought a label maker. <laughs> well, yeah, I just got the organizer. It's been a teenage witch, a twitch in time, obviously. It's Spice Well, that's my original one. I spent hours playing it. I've spent seconds watching you play it. And another, 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 another favorite is Dancing Stage Euro, Euro Mega Mix. Mix. No, Euro Mix. Euro Mix. There we are, that's my original one. I used to have one with a dance mat. Some awesome, awesome tracks on there. Are, are they custom tracks or are they actual yeah. songs? Yeah, well, there's some actual ones on there as well. Oh, okay. Like, um, I think when the rhythm, river, when the, what is it? When the rhythm, da, da, da. Yeah. I know the one you mean. <laughs> I think like um, the Buggles, Video Kill the Radio Star, and a couple of others like oh, that. Yeah. But I used to love the trancey ones because um, they were on the hard mode. And I used to like just be in my bedroom when I was about 13, sweating away on this <laughs> dance mat, trying to beat my score, beat my score, beat my score. Yeah, there's a lot of cool ones here. So we're not going to go too forensic in detail, but... And then down here, then you come to the PS4 section. Um, three copies of U-Star 2. <gasps> Lovely Robinson. music in some of these games. Yeah, you're a big fan of the Assassin's Creed mm. uh, music, aren't you? So there's... I'll kind of scan across. Arthur. Arthur Morgan. <sighs> oh, 
It's one of my favourite games. I love that. It is really good. We spent a lot of time playing that. This game, I don't know if I'm playing it properly, but <laughs> you not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really <laughs> weren't taken by that. Yeah, there's a... Uh... That's an awesome party game, isn't it? Astrobot Rescue Mission. Um, well, no, the, the Astrobot Rescue Mission, that one is, is one of the best games I've ever played, but that's a really cool single player thing. It, with the party version of that was on something called oh, PlayStation oh, Visions or something of oh, VR Worlds there. It was on the PlayStation VR Worlds um, thing as a mini game. Uh, and right. then the single, yeah, it kind of spun off to it so well. Uh, and then a lot of uh, PS3 games down here. There's a little bit of a mirror telephone. And then uh, the rest of the PS3 stuff down here. Thank you, Lee, for my uh, art book from Fallout 3. So, and this, me and co-op Chris at a charity event where we streamed Seven Days to Die for about, it felt like three weeks. So. Yeah, we need to get some more pictures of it in here, didn't we? So yeah, that was a quick tour. Um, well, thank you for joining us on the Games Room 2. Uh, um, obviously, we wanted go into depth a bit more to do a couple more videos or whatever. Yeah, on certain sections. But if if you want to have a goosey at any specific games or consoles or, you know, because we haven't shown you what consoles we've got basically yet or... No, we haven't. Or the handhelds or books we've got or, you know, any of the um, games, systems, libraries, just let us know in the comments. Send us a message on Twitter and we'll happily go through it again. It'd be nice just to do section by, literally section by section and then slowly just go through it and that's a video in itself. Yeah, that would take a long time for everyone. Maybe some people would be bored by that, but... I think I might be if it went on for like nine hours. No, it wouldn't be nine hours, <laughs> but you know what I mean? You like spend ten minutes yeah, that really would, picking them out. I could, yeah, I'd be up for that. If people want to like, because we haven't shown, we've got so many Amiga discs and stuff packed away that, you know, we didn't even show many of the um, Commodore games, which are obviously just like, you know, packed up behind each other, like rows of five, five deep, so. There were tiger handhelds inside? <laughs> well, actually there was, wasn't it? It was the Altered Beast. You were <laughs> panic over. So yeah, let us know in the comments if you want to go through any specific libraries or games and yeah, whatever you want to know really, but. Um, yeah, cool. Thank yeah. you and um, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.